All right, welcome. Now we're going to be looking at connecting three bipolar transistors in parallel. We've already discussed it, how to do it with two transistors in parallel. Now we'll see some issues crop up when we do the same thing with three transistors in parallel. This is your host, Lewis Laughlin. Visit my website at, you know where, bristolwatch.com. Let's get over to it. All right, here's my circuit that I actually constructed. Three transistors on the same heat sink. I uh, used a couple of 1 ohm resistors. These 20 ohm resistors don't serve much of a purpose other than make connections from the printed circuit board to the base of the transistor. Here's the LM317 current sink. Here is the schematic. It isn't radically different from the other one. I have uh, all three transistor collectors tied together. All three base circuits of the transistor tie together. The uh, All three collector outputs tie together. They go through an amp meter, which is what the X is all about, to a 5 ohm load. All the base currents join and go through the LM317 adjustable sync circuit. And the current up here divides between the three resistors. The resistors have the collector current plus the base current and so forth. Here is a typical high amperage battery. This particular battery is 220 ampere hours at 6 volts. Let's argue that the battery has been discharged 50% and we would need to charge it back up. 110 ampere hours. If we charge this at 5 ampere hours, it's going to take 22 hours to charge this particular battery. If we charge it at 20 amps, or 20 ampere hour rate, we've cut it down to 5.5. So that's why it is highly desirable to charge this at a higher current, but not so high as to damage the battery itself. In the original 2 amp circuit using two transistors, I did manage to split my current evenly between Q1 and Q2, and that redistributed the heat and so forth. And I main, and it came out to be a HFE, that is the output current divided by the combined base currents, IB1 plus IB2, at 3.5 milliamps that I measured down here, the HFE came out to 148. Oh, okay, here is my three amp, here's my three transistor circuit that I have adjusted for two amps on the output. You can measure it as a voltage across a five ohm load, or actually insert an amp meter. When I adjusted the LM317 current sink for 2 amps, I measured a near identical split of the current between the three transistors. What's interesting is the overall HFE. That's the, that is your DC gain. If you divide 2 amps by the measured IB of 13 milliamps, the HFE came out to 160. The original HFE of the three transistors was 148, 148, and 160. Because I am running these transistors at a lower amperage, if you look in their uh, transistor spec sheets, you will see that the lower the current through the transistor, the higher the DC gain. If one decides to add up these three currents, let's do that. 0.699 plus 0.699 plus point. Oh, that was supposed to have been 696. Let's make it point. 
688. It's 2 amps plus about 86 milliamps. Most of that can be accounted for by rounding errors and the 13, which is rather minor, going through the base circuit. All right, let's up our current to 3 amps. When I adjusted the LM317 sink, this gave I had to use 24.2 milliamps to output 3 amps that was near evenly split between the three transistors. If you add these back up, it is very close to the 3 amps output. But let's note something. Remember the transistor HFE and note all of these tests were run at 25 degrees C on the heat sink. Your average HFE should have been something like, what, 152 if I remember the averaging right. But if we divide 3 amps by 24.2 milliamps, my HFE dropped to 124. So there is a decrease in my overall HFE because I am drawing more current through the individual transistors. Let's see what happens if we draw 4 amps through the transistors. All right, now we are drawing 4 amps through the same circuit, and the distribution of current through these individual 1 ohm resistors, thus individual transistors, is nearly perfectly balanced. 1.38 amps, 1.38 amps, and 1.36 amps, if you include measurement mistakes and so forth. And so our combined current now of 4 amps, I measured off a base current sent through the LM317 sync circuit of 52.1 milliamps. 4 amps divided by 52.1 milliamps gives me an H collective HFE of 76. Boy, that's a big drop from 160 when we started out with 2 amps. Let's find out why and look at the spec sheets. Here is the spec sheet to the transistors that I used in this. It's an MJE2955. They are rated at 10 amps collector current, 60 volts, and 75 watts. Once again, immediately I'm going to derate this transistor by 30% down to, down to 7 amps and the appropriate reduction in watts. Why do I do this? First of all, off the other part of the spec sheet, your power dissipation in watts pretty steeply drops with temperature. Once again, by the time I reach, oh, just 122 degrees Fahrenheit, I've dropped the power rating by 15 watts that fast. The big question becomes, why did I get such big differences in HF, overall HFE as the current increased? This is the reason why. When I was splitting one, uh, 2 amps between, between 3 transistors, I was back here on the curve. Remember, I was operating this heat sink at 25 degrees C, so this is the curve that I need to be using. It was way back here. By the time I was drawing 1.3 amps or so, when I was drawing 4 amps through the three transistors, I dropped the HFE over here at this point somewhere. And by the time I'm drawing 5 amps through the system, well, that was 3 amps, uh, 4 amps would be considerably more. It's over here somewhere. By the time I draw, now these are individual transistors, it splits. So what happens if I'm drawing 3 amps, I'm draw, splitting it with an amp through each transistor. So I'm, each transistor is going to be here. So that's how I dropped from starting of maybe, 
what was it, a 160 HFE down to 125. That would have been here. But by the time I'm doing 4 amps, I'm going to end up in here and drop it even more. This is normal. So this is what you're dealing with with these transistors. As the current gain goes up, as you increase the current through the transistor, the gain automatically decreases, plus the temperature rise or, or shifting also changes the gain. So you have these two factors at play here, which you want to mitigate by splitting this, this current into many transistors as you practically can, redistribute the heat, and use a good heat sinking system. Finally, let's turn back to our question of a 20 amp battery charger circuit that somebody requested. Looking at the TIP36C, let's go down here to HFE. It's rated for a um, ma um, 25 amps, but that's drawing an IC current of 1.5 amps and so forth. What this comes down to is I'm going to immediately derate the 25 by 30 percent. So 25 times 0.7. I'm going to derate that down to 17.5 amps right off the bat. So to get 20 amps I could use two of these in parallel. Two of these particular transistors in parallel should be able to handle 20 amps, no problems. Uh, in fact, the ones that I was using, the MJE 2955s, three or four of those, even though I would prefer four, can easily handle 20 amps. As for these, I would use, just to be on the safe side and distribute the heat, and it's not that expensive, I would go with three of them. Let's see how much current we're going to run through them. If I'm running 20 amps divided by three, I already know what this is. Wrong. 20 amps divided by three transistors. It's 6.67 amps per transistor. So that's where, that gives you plenty and plenty of leeway for drift. But consider something, the input resistors that I used were 1 ohm. Drop these 2.25. If you take this number here, let's clear this, 0.25 times 6.67, it will produce about 1.66 volts on each transistor. This is easy to monitor because I'll be showing you a way to monitor these transistor currents off those resistors with an Arduino. So the Arduino, if you get something that's out of balance or starting to run away, Arduino can correct the problem for you. We will look in, into and see how that works. But you'd have to change the input resistors to 0.25 ohms. I would use three of them to split it up. And these transistors are a few dollars a piece. And that is that. All right. That's the end of this um, tutorial. Hope that helped. Hit a like and subscribe and all the other fun stuff catch you around and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.